There's been a lot written about the link between a society that celebrates a so-called macho culture and the direct correlation with violent crime. Consider this, men and boys commit some 90% of all violent crimes. I talked about that with Ward Uryan. He spent his career working to end domestic violence. Well, I think, you know, from a, from a natural biological sense, I don't believe there's any link, but I think that there's uh, huge cultural pressures that have uh, made those things seemingly uh, inseparable. And I think that one of the things that, that um, myself and colleagues like, my, like me uh, are trying to do is to break that link and to say that it's, it's actually not natural, that, that men are capable of having a full range of experiences and emotions and showing up in a wide variety of ways across the spectrum of behavior and that violence um, being limited to dominant violent masculinity is inherently dehumanizing. Ward, you say it's not natural, but we saw a lot of this come out at the trial of Oscar Pistorius, as you well know, prosecutors there painting him as a sort of macho guy, reckless with guns. They say he shot his gun in a restaurant through the sunroof of a moving car. And of course, the incident which led to the death of his girlfriend. Whether or not these incidents all happened or whether they are related or not, that's all open for debate. But here's the real question. What do we know about men and incidents of violence? Is there generally a warning before a case of, say, domestic violence, would you say? Well, uh, you know, it runs the gamut. And I think that there's a, a number of, of uh, risk assessment tools that we can utilize that help us uh, get a better sense of who's more likely to commit uh, further acts of violence. Uh, and of course, that's based on the history, usually, of other violent uh, actions and behaviors, uh, and, and all of them linked to the desire for dominance and power and control. Um, but I think that it's, it's you know, it, it's ironic that survivors are the best judge of whether or not violence will occur again, and yet we so seldom either listen to them or have the opportunity to really uh, listen to them in a way that, that provides uh, power to their voice. How do we change that, would you say? Well, I think that we need to continue to work on perfecting the, the science of risk assessment, but we also, um, we need to begin to uh, focus more efforts on prevention. And I think that one of the ways that we can do that is by working with young men and boys in, in trying to inform a new kind of masculinity, one that is more accessible to the full range of their humanity and uh, that emphasizes integrity and, and strength of character and connection with others as being some of the most primary and critical factors of being uh, a man in this culture. Do you think it requires retraining an entire society or is it just uh, as important as just you highlighting it here in this venue uh, and people beginning to discuss this? Well, I think, I think as the media begins to discuss this more in a, in a well-informed way, I think that that can help uh, not only inform the discussion that's occurring within uh, society, but I think we have to deliberately focus efforts on how we develop young men and boys. And I think that the way that we do that is by engaging leaders, by engaging coaches, by engaging other folks that have uh, authoritative relationships and, and those relationships where they are naturally poised to leverage their leadership relationship with, the, with young men and boys uh, to undo that link, to, to show them that, that uh, competition can be healthy if it's on the field, but that, that you know, strength is not for hurting. And then I think that there, there are inevitable harms that occur to any connection that that man has, uh, be it in his intimate partnership or in his family or beyond out into society as we've seen uh, recently in, in mass shootings right here in Seattle uh, just yesterday. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, Ward, you Ryan, thanks so much. Uh, you're with LifeWire. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike.